Hey everyone, Darren Eastman here, product manager for GitLab Runner. Hey, joining me today for this demo is Romal Achade, um, software developer on the GitLab Runner team. And Romal has been focused on improving our GitLab Runner for Kubernetes executor, and specifically a new tool or new utility piece of software that we're calling the GitLab Runner Pod Cleanup. So for those folks that are not that familiar with the Kubernetes executor, it is very interesting, very cool piece of software for GitLab Runner specifically, that enables you to other scale GitLab runners to execute your GitLab CI CD jobs at scale. So it's a really interesting piece of software. So if you need auto scaling um, for your CI CD job executions, I do suggest you look at our GitLab runner Kubernetes executor, which is supported on multiple different platforms, including Red Hat OpenShift, we have the operator for that as well. So in this demo, we'll be reviewing with Romal's help the new Q um, pod cleanup tool for GitLab runner, um, especially because we had a few long standing issues related to orphan pounds. So Romal, thanks for joining. Um, can you tell us why we had to create our own pod cleanup utility for GitLab runner? Well, Darren, uh, we had to create our own pod cleanup tool uh, to actually give more flexibility to our users on when they can get rid of the uh, orphan pod or any pod, depending on what is actually happening. So uh, why a specific tool? It's mainly because uh, runner Runner, a report created by Runner, uh, run different type of job. So it will be, it will have been really hard to kind of find a general rule to uh, to identify when those pods could be deleted. So the, the the intention, the goal with a pod cleanup tool is to give a flexibility to the user to actually specify when they want the orphan pod to be deleted. Oh wow, Ramal, that's super interesting. Um, I'm super excited to see the demo. I, I know we had started this journey. We were just so initially focused on just the issues and the bugs around pod cleanup in general. And to see this evolve to this very interesting approach that is really specific to solving it for GitLab and for GitLab runner is really, really cool. So I'm super excited to see the demo. Um, can you show us a little bit more about how this thing works and how to use it? Yeah, sure. So let me share my screen. So basically, uh, the installation is done through a Kubernetes um, uh, to a kubectl command. So we have in the project, in the GitLab Runner Pod Cleaner project, a YAML file which can be used uh, from scratch by user to install to install uh, the application. So to actually make everything cleaner, I kind of prepare some shell script. I would just execute to have uh, everything done. And so that is the first part of the, the installation. The second thing to know is when you want to use the application, they are, the configuration is done through uh, environment variables. So we made sure that the default, the default values for those parameters can be used normally by the user without having to specify specific one. And uh, most of what I'm talking about will be documented in the documentation of the, of the application. So basically what, what the script done is it gets the YAML file from the project and it will install straight the code, the code cleaner tool on my, on my uh, laptop. So it's a Kubernetes which is uh, executed. So I was talking why it is installing I was talking about the configuration variable we will need. So the most important uh, to keep in mind are the pod GC interval, which is actually uh, the, the time between each cycle. So when the pod, if the pod cleaner is launched, it cleaned the pod and then he went on slate for the pod GC interval time. You also have the pod Pod GC Kubernetes annotation, which is actually the annotation which will be considered to look at to look for the TTL setting. So that will give to our pod cleanup uh, the information about the TTL to be considered to, to, to decide or not if the pod has to be deleted. And the last one, I believe, which is also important, it's uh, the number, it's the pod Kubernetes request limit. Because for a huge cluster, maybe you have thousands of pods running. So it gives the pod cleanup tool uh, the limit of pods it needs to request at each cycle. And 
And at last, the code GC limit, which is actually the maximum of code that can be deleted in one cycle. So that being said, so here we have uh, the code cleanup which has been installed. The second thing is, as we, as I said before, we want to give a flexibility to the user to actually determine what he want to delete. So when he is creating the, I also have some fight with her in advance. When he is creating the the Tomal file for runner, he has to add this annotation, as you can see here, for GitLab runner. So this annotation will be added to each port, each each port which are created. So the cleanup tool will be able to look up to it and make the decision accordingly. So what I will do now is to run runner. So I have one runner who, which is launched here. And uh, I will come back to one project and kind of execute a job just to have uh, some codes being launched. So this job basically what it does is it sleep for 10 minutes. It done, it's nothing else which is done. So we will see here, if I come to the job, we have a job running as you will see. And if I go back to my log, you will see that a runner has picked up the job and everything is going on. So let's stop runner here. So it has been stopped. So it doesn't have really the time to. Excuse me. I shouldn't have stopped it. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so I relaunch my job here. So I give uh, in my configuration 30 seconds for the code cleanup tool. So what it will do is it will look for my code and those who are, who have been created for more than 30 seconds will be simply deleted. So if we wait for 30 seconds, we will see that our job will fail with an error message of runner saying that the, the code has disappeared and that makes sense because the code cleaner tool has deleted so a good way to also see what is happening here is uh, to actually we can go with we can go with the qctl command here to see the log of our application of our port, which is run here. So you can see here that we have found our port here, and this port has been successfully deleted. And the time the time to leave, which was given to our port at that time, was thirty seconds. So the port GC start found our code, which was launched with runner. Notice that there was a annotation given with a TTL of 30 seconds. And after this time, everything was, was clean up. So that is about the demo. <laughs> that's brilliant. So just to summarize, that's really interesting. That's really great, awesome work between Roma, you and the rest of the team, Georgie and so on. So just to summarize, as a user, I will inst using kubectl, uh, I will install the, the GitLab Runner pub cleanup utility onto the same Kubernetes cluster as my GitLab Runner manager. In my GitLab Runner config um, TOML file, I just have to add the annotation that says, hey, by the way, there's this new thing that you have to use called pub cleanup. And so that uh, annotation then means that the pub cleanup utility will be invoked each time the GitLab Runner Kubernetes executor spawns pods to execute jobs. Exactly. And depending on your job, let's say you have one who's supposed to run longer, you can put an, you can put an hour for another one who's supposed to run shorter, you can just put 10 minutes, it's really up to you. Oh, okay, brilliant. Hey, well, that's the, that's it for a quick demo on the new pub cleanup um, tool. Um, again, thanks a bunch for Romana Chachi for doing this work. And, um, you know, for, for our users out there, please drop comments here on the video or also comments um, in the issue. As you use this, we will definitely be iterating on this to add more capabilities in the future. So thank you so much and have a great day. Cheers. You too. Bye.